Hey guys, welcome to day three of Chris Switches to Arch, and uh, I've uh, today's been kind of a tame day because I've been spending most of my day on the web reading and researching stories for Unfilter, but I have done a couple of things, and I thought I'd start off answering a couple of questions from my last couple of days. Uh, first, I wanted to answer kind of a reoccurring question I've been seeing on YouTube. A lot of people are YouTubers, or I'm sorry, uh, Ubuntuers on the YouTubers, and uh, they want to switch to Arch. So people have been asking what I thought about the install experience. Um, you know, to be honest with you, I, I still think it's a little more work than I'd want to spend if I was going to do it very often. I'm starting to become a believer in this theory with Arch that once you get it set up, you leave it. Now, we'll see if I break this, but so far, the more I customize it, the more it becomes mine. And I like the idea of just forever continuing my distribution. My It's my Linux. Um, and I know that sounds funny, and you can always say, well, I can make Ubuntu, or I could make SUSE feel like my Linux. That's true, but the, just the level at which you can do it is is um, rewarding for a Linux geek. Um, so I can kind of I, I can kind of say, if you don't mind spending, you know, your first time through, it'll probably take you a while. Second or third time through, it'll probably take you about a half hour. And I was curious. I wanted to put the question out there to uh, longtime archers. Um, what do you guys think about things like Archbang? You know, I was thinking if I reloaded next time, I might uh, go the Archbang route just to uh, start with something quick and dirty and just get it loaded on my box and then, uh, hello, and then uh, go from there. So I kind of like to get the consensus of the community from there because I've heard good things and bad things about that. So I thought uh, that would be one to uh, to, to kind of get your, your, your thoughts on. Um, I wanted to answer a few questions in our subreddit too. Uh, A1 Snicker asked if I've gotten my fingerprint reader working. Not yet. But uh, I might try that uh, on Friday. I wonder what happens if I demessage up in this thing, and then I, uh, and what do I grep for finger? Maybe what do you think? Script? No, nothing. <laughs> I don't know what I would even look for, but it, it's hopefully not too tough. See, the one thing is, is uh, uh, that, that that thumb reader was actually. It sounds kind of corny, but it's actually pretty cool. Uh, I also got a lot of comments about the screen recorder program. It sounds like it's a bug in the Nvidia driver that I have. Uh, so I'm back to my HDMI capture, which makes the fonts look a little funky because uh, my video HDMI out on my laptop is sending 60i, 60, 60 frames interlaced. And that interlacing, when it is getting processed, is screwing the fonts up. Um, so if anybody knows how to fix that, that would also be something I'd love to know from from experienced Arch users. Uh, Catastrophal said, Chris, I just watched your two days of Arch. I wanted to jump in and say that the activities thingy in Steam full screen games is in fact a Steam bug. And he links to uh, a thread on GitHub. It happens on pretty much every desktop environment except Unity. Side note, it's also annoying that they don't provide fallback status icon instead of that indicator stuff. Um, and then Blackout says it doesn't happen on KDE Arch. I actually uh, never saw it on KDE either. Um, but I do, you know, it doesn't, so if you guys didn't see uh, day one, you might go check that out. When I play Steam games, there's a there's a little, the little activities button up over here uh, sticks up over the video. It doesn't actually really bother me, but um, a lot of people have commented on it, actually. So uh, I don't know. And here's that, here's that discussion thread over on GitHub where they actually show uh, it happening in KDE in the screenshot. So I don't know. Uh, I was also provided a link on our subreddit to a quick comparison table. Uh, quote unquote quick of the different package management tools for Arch. I've been talking a lot about using PackR and Yoert, Yoert, and uh, it's still getting really mixed things. It's probably the biggest mixed signals thing I've gotten is uh, is Yoert versus uh, the other things. But um, you know, I, I I appreciate the resources from you guys. Uh, I also had a little success story I wanted to share um, on uh, Ubuntu thirteen oh four. One of my favorite email programs quit working. Uh, it's called Geary. And uh, when you you could install it, but it just uh, wouldn't run. And I'm I'm very happy to say that on uh, Arch, it fires up and runs uh, no problem. I actually think the problem with Geary is um, Unity related and and the way they do their notifications. But it's a good example of now I have access to one of my absolutely favorite applications um, right from the Arch user repository. So that's been that's been really positive. I've ex I've been experimenting with um, some different GNOME extensions. Uh, I know this isn't really specifically Arch related, but in my move to Arch, I've also been I've migrated from Unity. And a lot of people give me some crap because I've kind of made this Unity like with with a dock and stuff on the side here. I actually feel like it's better than Unity in a lot of ways. I feel like the dock hiding and tele hiding stuff is better. Uh, you can see I keep a pretty minimal dock. I don't need a lot. I just figure if I need more than that, I'll go into the activity screen. Um, but so a couple of my favorite extensions still are this Tasker uh, extension up here, which some people think might be causing some of my issues, but it's, yeah, I think it's really nice. I've got my uh, temperature um, 
uh, thing for my video card up here. And another one that people think might be causing me some of my issues is the system monitor extension, because every now and then GNOME crashes on me. But I don't know. My one I really like, too, is this background changer. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but it allows you to... Uh, see, I have it on delay for every two hours, and then it'll cycle through backgrounds. Eh, it's just small stuff. But uh, I like it. Um, my, uh, I'm, I'm streaming this live, and the chat room says that... Uh, 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 it's uh, Screamo in the chat room says that Chris Lass, I've seen the system load extension uh, crashing GNOME 3.8 several times. So it sounds like that could be, maybe maybe that is, there, maybe there's something to that. I don't know, I really like the extensions on GNOME. I, I kind of hate to uh, t turn them off because I kind of feel like I wouldn't want to use it without them. So that's kind of a tough spot. And a lot of people have been suggesting I go to KDE. I might, I might, I don't know. I, I've, I'm so happy with this setup that I hate to go to KDE right now, if I could just not have the crashing. And the crashing isn't horrible, and it recovers pretty fast, but it feels a little obnoxious. That's all. Uh, I think that's everything I wanted to cover for uh, day three of switching to Arch. It's been a pretty casual day with uh, just uh, mostly browsing the web and using it, you know, like an actual computer. So just a reminder, I'd like to hear your thoughts on using ArchBang as a starting point if I reload at some point and uh, what you guys think about uh, maybe going that route as a, as a starting point. Again, I don't think the installation's a killer, but uh, one of the one of the main questions I'm getting from uh, non Arch users is is there a shortcut I can take? And I know a lot of Arch users hate that. They really hate that. Um, and one of the questions I've got is how has the response from the community been? And I'd say it's definitely improving a little bit because some people know about this experiment now, so they're kind of being nicer up front. Um, and also just because I'm learning what questions to ask versus what to just go search in the wiki for, because I find that a lot of stuff's actually in the wiki. <laughs> and then and then it, it, like. What's not in the wiki, sometimes it's just a matter of not knowing how to look in the wiki. Like this uh, like this helper's comparison table, uh, I, I'm sure I probably came across this and forgot that it was even there. Like because the wiki is just massive. So, you know, there is a lot of stuff there. Once you learn where to ask, how to ask versus what to look up and where to look it up, the community becomes a lot easier to navigate. So that'd probably be my biggest tip now, day three in the switching experiment to new users is... Uh, have a little bit of a thick skin at first because I, I do still kind of have the sense of elitism just a little bit from the users. And it's kind of like because their club does have this barrier of entry. You have to be so tall to enter their to enter their club. And I, you know, I could see how that would sort of potentially lead to a little elitism. However, that elitism side is also met with a very passionate, helpful side where they want to show people sort of the arch way. So you just got to find those people. You got to find the right balance. And I think that's probably true for every community. So like I say, it's, uh, it's, it's one of those things where you just have to have a thick skin. Anyways, let me know about ArchBang and what you guys think about that and uh, any other tips you guys might have for me and uh, any tips or pointers on how to get my fingerprint reader working on my Bonobo Extreme would be awesome. All right, guys. Thanks.